Welcome to this MOOCs online video course theory of yarn structure. In the last two classes, we discussed about module 8 tensile mechanics of yarns. We started with discussion on mechanics of parallel fiber bundle, there we discussed Hamburger's theory and also <coughs> we solved two numerical problems. Today, we are going to start with the third numerical problem on module 8. <coughs> so, this problem is basically an extension of problem number 1 of this module. You remember in problem number 1, this information was given cotton fibers possess a tenacity of 0 0.36 Newton per tex, breaking strain 11 percent polyester fiber possess a tenacity of 0.41 Newton per tex and breaking strain 46 percent. Further the polyester fiber shows specific stress of 0 0.12 Newton per tex at a strain of 11 percent. Determine the blend ratio of cotton and polyester fibers at which the bundles tenacity will be the minimum. Also determine the strength of the corresponding bundle. So, What information are given? Let us summarize. P1 by T1 is equal to 0 0.36 Newton per tex is given. We consider 1 denotes cotton and 2 denotes polyester. Okay? Then another information is given P2 by T2 0 0.41 Newton per tex. <coughs> breaking elongation is also given here, breaking elongation is also given here. Another information which is given as S2 A1 divided by T2 is given as 0 0.12 Newton per tex. So, these all information are given. We have to determine the blend ratio at which the bundle tenacity will be minimum. This we have already derived in the last class. We will straight away use the expression here. So, the bundle tenacity will be minimum when G2 is equal to P1 by T1 divided by P1 by T1 plus P2 by T2 minus S2 A1 by T2. So, these data are given here. What is P1 by T1 is given as 0. 0 0.36 plus P2 by T2 is given as 0 0.41 minus S2 A1 by T2 is given as 0 0.12. So, this value will come as 0 0.36 to 0.65, which is equal to 0 0.55. That means, when so G1 is 1 minus G2, 0 0.45. When 
cotton fiber mass percentage is 45 and polyester mass percentage is 55, the resulting bundle gives the minimum strength. So, this was the first part of the problem. Now, the second part is what will be tenacity of this bundle consist of 45 percent cotton fibers and 55 percent polyester fibers. So, let us solve that part of the problem. As we know bundle tenacity is the minimum of two values right. So, here G 1 is given as 0 0.45 and G 2 is given 0 0.55. So, minimum of two values 0 0.45 into 0 0.36 plus 0 0.55 into 0 0.12 comma this value 0 0.55 into 0 0.41. So, this sorry is a maximum maximum of these two values. So, these two values will come 0 0.228 and 0 0.226, which will be equal to 0 0.228 Newton per tex. So, the bundle consisting of 0 0.45 percent 0, 0 45 percent cotton fibers and 55 percent polyester fibers will show minimum strength and what is the minimum strength? Minimum strength is 0 0.228 Newton per tex. So, this is the answer of the second part of the problem. Now, we will discuss another numerical problem, the fourth one, which is basically an extension of problem number 2. If you remember in problem number 2 in this module, we calculated bundle tenacities when cotton and polyester polypropylene fibers of given data were blended at different proportions. In this particular problem what is asked is the minimum weak the determine the strength of the weakest bundle. So, in problem number 2 also these information were given P 1 by T 1 is equal to 0 0.36 Newton per tex then A 1 0 0.11 same data were given in problem number 2 P 2 by T 2 0 0.53 Newton per tex A 2 0 0.25 another information is given S 2 A 1 by T 2 0 
three zero Newton per tex. Now we have to first find out what is the brain ratio at which bird delta density will be minimum. Then we have to determine the strength of the bundle at that particular blend ratio. So, let us first determine what is the blend ratio at which bundle tenacity will be minimum. So, so in this particular problem 1 subscript 1 denotes cotton and subscript 2 denotes polypropylene. So, the blend ratio at which bundle tenacity will be minimum is 12 to P 1 by T 1 plus P 2 by T 2 minus S T A 1 by T 1 is this. Now, in this particular problem P 1 by T 1 is given as 0 0.36, 0 0.36 P 2 by T 2 is given as 0 0.53 minus S 2 A 1 by T 2 is given as 0 0.3 0 right. So, what will be this value 0 0.36 divided by 0 0.59. So, this will be equal to 0 0.61. Then what is G 1? G 1 is 1 minus G 2. So, 1 minus 0 0.61 so, 0 0.39. What does that mean? The blend ratio cotton 39 percent, polypropylene 61 percent. So, a bundle which consists of 39 percent cotton fibers and 61 percent polyester fibers gives the minimum tenacity. Then what is the minimum tenacity? So, now we will solve that part of the problem. So, minimum tenacity will be obtained in this manner. right. So, here what is your G 1? 0 0.39. What is P 1 by T 1? 0 0.36 plus what is Z 2? 0 0.61. What is S 2 A 1 by T 2? 0 0.30. So, this is one value. The next value is 0.53. So, there will be two values 0 0.3234 and another will be Show the bundle which gives you minimum tenacity, where the minimum tenacity is 0 0.3234 Newton per tex, and that bundle consists of 39 percent cotton fibers and 61 percent polypropylene fibers. 
So, far we have solved 4 numerical problems. Now, we will go to discuss the next part of this module that is related to stress strain relation in yarn. So, we will now start that part stress strain relation in yarn. If you remember on the first class of this module we told that in this module we will be going to discuss two things. One is the me tensile mechanics of parallel fiber bundle, second is the stress strain relation in yarn. So far we have discussed the tensile mechanics of parallel fiber bundles, now we are going to discuss about stress strain relation in yarn. So, this part we will start with a diagram this diagram is very much related to the diagram that we discussed in the module of radial migration of fibers in yarn. What we see here is there is a general fiber element d l is its length this element. So, as we know from the module of radial fiber migration in yarn where we talked about general fiber path, fiber element, different angles. So, this fiber element initial fiber element of length d l is characterized by 3 quantities, one is d zeta, second is r second is r and the third is the angle beta. Now, we are applying load force to the yarn as a result yarn elongates. So, d l prime is this length this part you are not seeing d l prime is the length of the fiber element after elongation of the yarn. So, the axial position is changes changing. So, this is the increment along the axis of the yarn its radial position is changing and also its angle is changing. So, these three quantities determine the position of the fiber element after elongation of the yarn. Now, if we see this top picture, this is the length d l length of the fiber element, angle of the fiber element to the axis of yarn is beta, this width becomes r times d phi and this is d zeta. After elongation this fiber element will change its position, this change is shown here, the length becomes d l prime, angle becomes beta prime as a result the width becomes r prime d phi and the length axial distance becomes d zeta prime. So, this is about this image. Now, we will define three quantities. One is yarn axial strain yarn axial strain 
we use this symbol epsilon subscript a. This is the change in the axial distance divided by the original distance. So, what is the change in the axial distance? d zeta prime minus d zeta is the change in the axial distance divided by original distance, original distance is d zeta. So, d zeta prime minus d zeta by d zeta. So, this is equal to minus 1. So, we obtain 1 plus epsilon a d zeta, right. Second is the radial strain. How do we define radial strain? Radial strain is the change in radius divided by original radius. We denote this by epsilon r. What is the change in radius? r prime minus r is the change in radius divided by original radius. So, this becomes r prime by r minus 1. So, r prime is equal to r into 1 plus epsilon r. Then we define contraction ratio similar to Poisson's ratio. What is Poisson's ratio? Is the ratio of radial strain by axial strain. So, we define contraction ratio is like Poisson's ratio. We use the symbol eta for that is equal to minus radial strain by axial strain. This gives you minus eta times this. The last quantity is fiber strain. Because of the apply application of force, the fiber is also stressed, it also exhibits strain. So, what is fiber strain? Fiber strain, let us use this symbol epsilon L. Again, it is defined by the ratio of change in fiber length divided by original fiber length. What is change in fiber length? d L prime minus d L is the change in fiber length divided by original length. So, d L prime divided by d L minus 1. So, d L prime is 1 plus epsilon and L into d L. So, if we summarize these four quantities, first one was d zeta prime is equal to this. Second one was new radius 1 plus epsilon r. Third was contraction ratio and the fourth is this one. Right. Our next step, if we come back to the original drawing, our next step will be applying Pythagorean theorem to this triangle and also to this triangle. So, if we apply Pythagorean theorem, let us see what happens. d L square is equal to R d phi square plus d zeta square. So, let us write down d 
d l square is equal to r d phi square plus d zeta square d l square is equal to r d phi square plus d zeta square. Similarly, if we apply Pythagorean theorem to this triangle, then we will see d l prime square is equal to r prime d phi square plus d zeta prime square. So, let us write down square r prime d phi square plus this. You see one more time this square is equal to this square plus this square. Okay. Now, we use our four basic relations <coughs> r prime was equal to r times 1 plus epsilon a r d phi square. This was equal to r prime right and what is your d zeta prime d zeta prime we have derived square So, if we rearrange it then it becomes 1 plus epsilon a square square plus 1 plus epsilon r square d phi square. right further epsilon r this epsilon r is equal to minus eta into epsilon a definition of contraction ratio. So, what we obtain is square square plus 1 minus squared r d phi square right. We continue with derivation what is your d l prime by d l square d l prime by d l square was defined by one plus this show 1 plus epsilon l square is this divided by this. We have just now derived d l prime square is this. So, we write this in the numerator 1 plus epsilon a square square plus 1 minus eta epsilon square r d phi. In the denominator it is d l square. So, 
by using Pythagorean theorem we obtain this relation, we will use this in the denominator. So, we write this as square plus r time d phi square. Now, we divide numerator as well as denominator by this quantity digita square. Let us see what we obtain. One plus epsilon square, one minus eta square, R d phi by d zeta square, one plus R d phi by d zeta square. What is this quantity? R d phi by d zeta we come back to our diagram tangent beta tangent of this is equal to r times d phi by d zeta so r times d phi divided by d zeta is equal to tangent of beta so this quantity is equal to tan square beta right. So, we substitute this then what we obtain is squared plus 1 minus We stop here today, in the next class we will continue from this expression. Thank you, thank you very much for your attention.